Changing the game means we shatter the standard. Progress requires a powerful pace, but the right tools can take us to a braver place. Some come to play the game. We're here to change it. Make way. Hi, my name is Jade Stepter Baines, um, and this is my mom, Latanya Sheffield. She's currently the head coach at Cal State Long Beach. Um, you've won six conference championships while being there, uh, have had so many different individual and, and team conference champions. Um, you are also the 2016 and 2021 Olympic coach for the women's sprints and hurdles. Uh, you were the head coach for the 2019 Pan American Games. Uh, and that was actually our very, for, our very first uh, senior team that we were actually on together. So that was super cool. Um, and in addition to all of the coaching experience that you have, you have also been a tremendous athlete in your own right. Um, a 1988 Olympian, former American record holder, which you actually set that record um, in 1985 at the NCAA championships, where you were also the NCAA champion. So super congrats to you on that. Um, inducted into the San Diego State Hall of Fame. And of course, most importantly, you are my mom <laughs> and also my coach and a mentor. So uh, this is Latanya Sheffield. Wow, man, I, you know, uh, thank you. Well, hey, so I'm speaking speaking to my daughter. That's going to be the first and foremost. <laughs> and this is Jade Stepter Baines. So proud of this kid. Uh, she's just done so well whether it been uh, on the field or off the field. Uh, here's a few of her, her accomplishments. Uh, she's a grad from USC and uh, she majored in communications with a minor in, in animation. That's a whole thing, but animation and digital art in terms of athletics, man. She is a silver medalist uh, in the mixed uh, relay. So very, very excited about that. Uh, she has done so very well. She is a gold medalist in the four by four relay at the Pan American Games. When I even go back to her high school, I mean, I believe that how many championships, Jade, have you had in, in, in high school? <laughs> but she took all of her talents onto the collegiate stage at USC and her accolades are just really streamed down. I believe that she's a nine time NCAA All-American um, as well as a team captain for USC. That was really super awesome. <laughs> just to start off, when you were going to San Diego State University, you were like 100% I'm a dancer. And you were just so ready to, you know, to, to take on a whole dance career. Um, you ended up walking on to the track team at San Diego State. I'm curious because Title IX was enacted, you know, maybe around 10 years or so, but before that time, do you believe that there was any impact on how much you saw uh, collegiate athletics as a viable option for you because it was so new for women? At the moment, I did not know how impactful it would really be and how I was a recipient of, of, of the benefits for Title IX. Mm -hmm. It wasn't until I started to actually get into the 400 hurdle competition. And it's been a family affair of athletics in our household. So my brother, your uncle, Ron Sheffield, was my coach. And he introduced me to the 400 hurdles. Well, the 400 hurdles was not uh, contested in the Olympic Games mm -hmm. until I believe it was 1984. Okay. So there wasn't a lot of history mm -hmm. of the 400 hurdles in Olympic history. Right. And so I feel like it was that was the opportunity. But then when you do, if you will, the research and you see that women were not able to contest many events because maybe there was a thought that it would affect us physically. And so there weren't things that were offered to us. Mm -hmm. And so Title IX was very impactful because it opened the door to saying what's possible. 
Yeah. For me, running the 400 hurdles, wow, it was an opportunity to really make pathway. And <laughs> since that time, I absolutely believe that if it had not been for Title IX, a lot of what we see today in our elite 400 hurdlers, there would have been no way. Yeah, I just think about that. I mean, like you did the 400 hurdles, Kayla, my sister, she also did the 400 hurdles. I think that's the only reason why I was like, hey, I want to try the hurdles because I wanted to do everything that she did. Um, And so then I did that. But then even just thinking about it now, like even this past Olympics, like the women's 400 hurdles is one of the most competitive, the most engaging events right now. Um, And so to think that you were literally making history in that event, in our sport for women. I believe that that it's about opportunity Mm -hmm. and seizing the moment. And I think that that was more in the forefront of my mind, because if it wasn't me, it was going to be someone else. Right. So it's when you have an opportunity and someone goes for it Mm -hmm. and seizes the moment and creates and, and starts and creates pathway then that is so impactful. That's why Title IX is so important. You're right. It's just so important because it was the start. It Mm -hmm. was the what if changing to the why not. Right. And then in terms of you all, hey, every, every parent, or at least in this family, every parent wants to see their, their kid thrive. And so what we do is natural to us. We teach them what we know. (laughs) <laughs> so I just was teaching y'all what I know. Were there any women that you looked up to or that encouraged you to set big goals or who you feel like have made way for you? Oh, wow. Um, actually, um, there was Wilma Rudolph talking about someone that <laughs> made way. <laughs> she absolutely did that and why she was so um, close and kind of relation is because your grandmother, my mom, she actually worked with her after Wilma had a professional career in athletics. She also did community work, but knowing her history Mm -hmm. and it was just absolutely amazing. And I thought, again, that's that, what if, why not? And I believe that that's how we now can continue to make way. Yeah. My hope is that through the experiences that I have had, that I can, that other women have made way for me, that I'm able to then share that knowledge and create space to then make way for other women um, that are coming behind me. What difference do you think it would have made uh, for the time that, you know, the sports clinic was at its height, that if you were able to have incorporated I guess, like the digital resources that we have now and, you know, the ability to be able to have this virtual conversation. I mean, you have so many connections. So tune in all of your different connections from all over the world and not just the people who were able to make it like physically, but like everybody. What difference do you think that would have made? You hit all of them (laughs) right on the head. The whole point was to get the word out. We would have live streamed like nobody's business. Right. <laughs> we would have been on social media. I mean, whatever social media outlet to be had, we would have had that. Yeah. What's super awesome about this is the internet. Right. Because wherever you go, I can call, I can see. I mean, all these different applications. Here we are on Teams, right. and everyone is in different places. We're able to do that. And we're able to do that with family. How has that impacted you just being able to 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 reach us in any place that you go? I mean, I think it's been huge. I think that being able to be in however many different countries every year um, at these different track meets and different time zones and all of that, like and, you know, most of the time that I go to the track meets, you know, you have a team. So and and you're very committed to them and you guys have been really successful. And so most of the time I'm going by myself and, you know, just traveling all over the place by yourself as a woman, you know, not always speaking the language and all of that. It definitely does give you a sense of security and comfort when you're able to 
easily, like just pick up the phone, turn on your laptop, whatever it is to, you know, do a, a video call and actually be able to see someone's face, I think makes such a big difference. Incorporating technology into all of it has helped me grow as a, as an, as a track and field athlete. It has also helped me grow as a graphic designer. What would you still like to see happen for women? I would like to see um, women in leadership. Right. I'd like to see more of us in leadership. I believe that we have such a diverse um, experience as females. Um, I believe that we have a diverse responsibility as females whether we be sister, um, aunt, friend, mother, daughter, we have a different um, outlook on things that are, is very colorful. Um, I believe that we're daring, we're bold, we're brave, and I think that our communities would be better for it. And um I believe that we have a great ability to make way. I'm not sure what our future holds holds as, as women, but I know one thing for sure. When we can go, when we can look and see that we have leaders that are female, that are breaking down doors, then that's a, a big thing. When we have the soccer team, our international soccer team saying, let's have equal pay. Right. When we have Venus, who started this whole campaign on equal pay in terms of professional athletes and even in tennis, it's been a thing. And so we can still continue to use our voice. What are you doing this for? What are you doing track and field for? What is the point? Because you have to have a purpose. Mm -hmm. You have to go through all of these different things and come out on the other side because there's going to be something down the line that you are going to have to have all of those tools. I mean, you talk about all the time, the tools in your tool belt. You're going to have to have all of those things, all of those experiences, all of those skills, all of those things to be able to then empower someone else to work their way through whatever it is. And so I even looked at it in a bigger picture that you know, I have had this awesome experience to be able to see my mom navigate all of these different things and see her work her way through. I just thought about it like I want to be able to tell my daughter or express to her that, you know, hopefully daughter in the future, <laughs> but be able to express to her like even in the moments where you feel like there's like no re like what am I even here for? that you can make it through, that you can push through and that you can see the other side and that you can, you can write your ticket. Like you can write your ticket. And I think that that was the most important thing to me of like, why am I doing this? So that I can help somebody else because I know that whatever they're going to go through is going to be, is going to feel just as traumatic to them. Wait, so what you're talking about is making way. Yes. For somebody else. Yeah. But then on top of that, I remember like me and Kayla playing in the jungle gym, which is literally just the bleachers and like actually being able to watch you train and watch you do that. So to be able to have literally seen that and have those memories in my mind and then, you know, pretty much having the roles flipped. And now you're coaching me uh, and being able to to see myself like literally in your footsteps, like totally would say that you have made way for me to achieve what I have and to dream bigger dreams and to feel empowered and to feel like I can do anything and to always ask why not uh, and you know like why not me and I think that that has been the one of the biggest things that has helped me strive for every single goal whether it's on the track in school like anything it's just like well why not me why not why not? And I'm so excited that you have had the epiphany, if you will, of your purpose. Mm -hmm. And I have said so many times to you, as well as many other student athletes, that you've got to go through your going through because 10 years down the line, there is somebody waiting for you. 
Yeah. You don't know who they are. You don't know their name. You don't even know the situation in which you're going to have to imp impact, influence, help, support those people that are before you. Yeah. You gotta do your work now. I know we have this saying in our family, you don't have to be asleep to have a dream. Dream. And dream those big, crazy dreams. The dreams that are going to impact you, but it's going to influence others. It's going to resonate and empower folk. Continue that dream and continue to want to empower other people because the real attest to life is not what you have established for yourself, but really what have you given others? That will be the real, real attest to life for sure. Yeah. yeah. Well, I want to say thank you. Uh, thank you for joining me in this conversation, Mommy. Um, I love you. And thank you just for for instilling so much into me and Kayla and making way for my generation of women athletes and and the, the next to the next to come as well. So thank you so much. Um, I love you. I love you back. <laughs>